Hello, Matthew here, and we're looking at question 5, which is worth 30 marks. So we're shown an equilateral triangle with sides of length 8 centimetres. So the first thing to note here is that in an equilateral triangle, all sides are equal and all the angles are also equal. So that means that all sides will be the same length and all angles will be the same as each other as well. So now let's have a look at A part 1 and we're asked to write down the size of the angle PQR which is this angle right here. Now as I've just written on the screen all sides equal all angles equal. So the first thing to note is that the side PQ is 8 centimeters which means the two other sides are also going to be 8 centimeters. So let's write that into the diagram. However, the question is asking for the size of the angle PQR, which I've marked in yellow there. So we know that in any triangle, there's always 100, 180 degrees. So we now have to work out how many degrees is in each angle of this triangle. And remember, they'll all be the same as it's an equilateral triangle. And in an equilateral triangle, all angles are the same. So to work this out, we can simply divide 180 by 3, as this will give us whatever number you have to multiply by 3 to get 180. So 100, 180 divided by 3, that's equal to 60 degrees. So that means every angle in the triangle PQR Will be 60 degrees and that's actually true for any equilateral triangle all angles in any equilateral triangle will be equal to 60 degrees so as i said the answer here the angle pqr is 60 degrees and both of the other angles are also 60 degrees whenever i'm doing a trigonometry question i always like to write in or draw in the information that i have on the diagram of the triangle so i've already written in the two of the sides are eight centimeters we've worked out that the angle pqr is 60 degrees and as it's equilateral, the two of the sides will also be 60 degrees. So that's the answer for A part 1, 60 degrees. Now let's have a look at A part 2. A part 2 of the question wants us to show that the area of the triangle PQR is equal to 16 root 3 centimetres squared. We actually have three formulas for the area of a triangle. There is one on page 18 and there's two on page 9. So the one on page 18 is to do with coordinate geometry and the line. In that one, you need the vertices, the coordinates of the vertices, I should say. So in that case, in this case, that would be the coordinates of PQR. And of course, we don't have the coordinates of PQR, so we cannot use the formula on page 18. So that's mainly to be used in questions where you have the line or coordinate geometry. So let's have a look at page 9 in the formula book then and see the other two formulas and decide which one is best to be used here. So the two formulas we can use is the top one here, a is equal to a half a h or also a is equal to a half a b sine c. So the first one there, that's half a times by h and if we look at the triangle on the left hand side here that will show us what a and h are. So h is the height where a is the base. So you can see a is at the base of the triangle there and then h is the height from the base up to the top. However, the most important thing is that it's the perpendicular height. I see there's 90 degrees in here. So see that's marked with 90 degrees there. That means it's the perpendicular height. So basically the first formula there is the area of a triangle is equal to a half the base by the perpendicular height. And the upside down t there that I've written on the screen means perpendicular. So that's just an, an easier way to write perpendicular. As I don't think I'll fit perpendicular in on the screen. The second formula there is half a b sine c. So that's when you have an angle, you can multiply the two sides that the angle is between. So in this case, we have the angle c. And c is between a and b. So you're going to multiply a times by b times by sine of the angle that's between both those sides a and b and then multiply your answer by a half so a half a b sine c and that will also give you the area and you should get the same answer if you've done it correctly no matter which method you use either the method on top which is half base by perpendicular height or the half a b sine c so you should get the same answer with both so let's go back to our question now and see which one we're going to use so in our case here we don't have the perpendicular height so be careful the height isn't necessarily just the eight centimeters here or here, as it has to be perpendicular with the base. So that means it has to be 90 degrees with the base. So in our case here, that would be something like this, all the way up to the top. But unless we measured the distance from the base up to the vertices or there, a straight line up that makes it 90 degrees with the line PQ, unless we found the length of that line there, 
we would not be able to use the first formula, which was half the base by the perpendicular height. So that means we must use the other formula, half AB sine C. So remember the C is the angle, and then C is between the two sides A and B. So let's go up to our triangle and choose a C, an A and a B. So when I'm using this formula, I normally choose the angle, which is going to be C first, and then pick the two sides that that angle is between. Here, it's much easier as every angle is the same and every side is also the same. So for sake of simplicity, I'm going to pick the angle PQR, which is this one right here. Of course, they're all 60 degrees, so it doesn't matter. But I'm going to call that my angle C. Now you'll see from the formula that I showed you before that C is between the two sides A and B. So I'm going to call this side here A and the other side B. Of course, A and B are both 8, as every side is in this triangle. So now I can say that the area of PQR is a half, 8 times by 8 times by sine 60. And putting that into the calculator, and we can say that that's equal to 16 root 3 centimeters squared. If you aren't getting 16 root 3, your calculator may be in radians. So just ensure that your calculator is in degrees if you aren't getting 16 root 3 centimeters squared. So that's your answer for A part 2. If you got both of those correct, A part 1 and A part 2, they were worth a combined 10 marks. Now let's have a look at A part 3. Here we're asked to work out the perpendicular height of the triangle. So let's go up and have a look. So you might remember before that I said that the perpendicular height of the triangle would be this line here, as there's 90 degrees between that line and the base PQ. So we're trying to find the length of that purple line there that as there's 90 degrees between the purple line and the base, which was given as PQ, as the side PQ, I should say. So now we're trying to find the length of that purple line there. That is the perpendicular height, as it's perpendicular with the base PQ. So that basically means that there's an angle of 90 degrees between the base and that purple line there, which is the perpendicular height. So to work out the length of that purple line, I'm going to use a thing called Pythagoras' Theorem. You were probably familiar with this from the junior cycle, but I'll go through it again just in case you're not. So Pythagoras' theorem says that c squared must be equal to a squared plus b squared, where c is the side across from the 90 degrees in a 90 degree triangle, and a and b are the other two sides. Now just be careful here, you can only use this in a 90 degree triangle. If the triangle isn't 90 degrees, you can't use Pythagoras' theorem. So I'm going to remember about the A, B and C that I have now. And I'm now going to show you a two smaller triangles within the bigger triangle. So we have this smaller triangle. And then the smaller triangle here. So I can use Pythagoras' theorem to work out the length of that side in the middle that had the purple line on it. And I can just pick one of the triangles to use Pythagoras' theorem on, and I should get the same answer for either one. So I'm going to pick the pink triangle, but if you want to go with the triangle on the right, the yellow one I've marked out, that's also okay. You will get the same answer with both. So now I have my pink triangle here marked out. There's three sides and three angles, so therefore it's a triangle. Now, Pythagoras' theorem needs me to have two sides, and we want to find out what the third side is. Be careful. So now instead of 8 centimeters for the base, we have 4 centimeters for the base. And I'm going to call the length of the perpendicular line, the perpendicular height we're trying to find, as x. And we're trying to find x here, and we can find x by using Pythagoras' theorem. Now, remember what I said? The side across from the 90 degrees is the C, and the two of the sides are A and B. So that means in our case here, the 90 degrees is here, and across from that, is the 8 centimeters, so therefore 8 is my C, and then the X and the 4 are A and B. It makes no difference which is A and which is B. I'm going to say that 4 is A and X is B, but if you do it in the other way around and X is A and 4 is B, you should get the same answer. So now that we have our A, B, and C, let's use Pythagoras' theorem to work out the perpendicular height, or in the case of the diagram here, the value of X. So it was c squared equals a squared plus b squared. And I said c is 8, so that's going to be 8 squared. a was 4. 
and b was x. So I get 8 squared should be equal to 4 squared plus x squared, and now we have to solve for x. So 8 squared is 64, 8 by 8, 4 squared is 16, and then we're trying to find what x is, so we can leave that as x squared. 64 and 16 are both like terms, but they don't have any x in them. So I can move the 16 over to the left hand side and change it to minus 16. So that gives me 64 minus 16 is equal to x squared. And 64 minus 16 is 48. So 48 is equal to x squared. Now some people forget this next step, but when you have an x squared equals to some number, to work out what the x is, you just square the other side, as the opposite of x squared is the square root. So for example, 4 squared is 16, and the square root of 16 brings you back to the 4. It's the same idea here. So that's going to be x is equal to the square root of 48. So that means x is equal to 4 root 3. So in other words, the perpendicular height is 4 root 3 centimetres. So the length of the purple line up here is 4 root 3 centimetres. So that's our answer for A part 3 and that was worth 10 marks. Other ways of solving that question included using the half base by perpendicular height formula and equating it to the area in A part 2 which was 16 root 3 and then solving for the, for the perpendicular height. But in my opinion using Pythagoras' theorem is the most straightforward way to answer this question but whatever method you use will get you full marks. So that was worth 10 marks as I said. Now let's have a look at the next part of the question and we're told that GHK is a right angled triangle and we're told that the angle GHK is 90 degrees, the distance between G and H is 12 centimetres and the line GK is equal to 30 centimetres. So now we have to find the distance between H and K, basically the length of this side here which I'm going to call X. So we're told that we can use Pythagoras' theorem for that and remember what I said before, to use Pythagoras' theorem you must have a 90 degrees in your triangle and of course we're told to that it is right angled and the right angle is here. So this makes it very straightforward to mark or C or A and or B. So to remind you of the formula it's C squared equals A squared plus B squared. And that is on page 16 of our formula book. So C is the side across from the 90 degrees and then 12 and x are going to be the other two sides, a and b. So the side across from the 90 degrees here is 30. So that's going to be our c. And then 12 and x are going to be a and b. It doesn't matter which is a and which is b. I'm going to say that 12 is a here and x is b. So let's stick this into our Pythagoras' theorem formula now and solve for x. So c squared, which is going to be 30 squared, equals a squared, which is going to be 12 squared plus b squared which is going to be x squared. So 30 squared is 900 that equals 12 squared which is 144 plus x squared which stays as x squared as that's what we're trying to find. So now 900 and 144 are both like terms as neither of them have any x or x squared beside them. So I'm going to put both of them on the same side. I'm going to put the 144 over to the left hand side and when you change a positive number across to the other side of the equals to sign, it goes from positive to negative. So that gives me 900 minus 144, and that's equal to x squared. So 900 minus 144 is equal to 756. So we get 756 is equal to x squared. Now we need to solve for x. And as I said at the end of a part 3, when you have x squared is equal to some number, to work out what x is, you just square the other side. So here it's going to be x is equal to the square root of 756. And if you put that into your calculator, you'll see that that's equal to 6 root 21 
or 27.5 centimeters. So to one decimal place, the length of the line HK in the triangle here is equal to 27.5 centimeters. And that was worth 10 marks. So that's our answer for part B, the final part of the question and the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching and I hope I helped.